In today's connected and digital world, connectivity and the infrastructure that enables it are seen as critical. The society is highly dependent on these networks to provide connectivity and services around the clock, 24-7, 365 days a year. And service providers are building high-performing programmable networks to elevate the value of this connectivity while at the same time achieve unparalleled operational efficiency. But lurking in the dark are cybersecurity threats. To be prepared and face these threats, what do service providers have to look for and what do they need to do with their networks? This is the topic of today's session. Join in. Welcome. Mobile networks uh, today operate in a landscape where the cyber threats are both evolving and increasing. If cybercrime was a country, it would be the third largest economy in the world. Can you imagine? It's, it's very big. Um, and then to add to that, the change in geopolitics have made a big impact on this landscape. So uh, if you take 2024, uh, then you will see several significant attacks on, on the mobile networks. Uh, and then we know that uh, advanced persistent threats are a reality, right? Can you explain? They are a kind of very sophisticated and well-funded uh, attacker groups. They have a long-term goal. They don't, they don't do a small attack and go away, but they remain in the network for a long time for espionage purposes. So what are then your uh, views on security threats for mobile networks? In the telecommunications threat landscapes, there's typically three kinds of threat actors. It's the nation states uh, with the APTs, and they are typically after espionage. Then there's the cybercrime, typically after financial gain. And then there's the hacktivists that have different kinds of motives. And, and agenda. B what I have to emphasize is a risk both to the subscriber and also the service provider. Prajwal, these attacks that we've talked about, are they also commonplace uh, for the radio access network part? I would not say that the question is to ask if a radio access network will ever be targeted and attacked in the same way or not, but when. So, so winter is coming, Joachim, <laughs> and service providers can do best by preparing while they still have a chance. This actually poses a challenge to our customers. And that actually requires quite a lot of special know-how in mobile networks to be able to provide the cyber defense against these threat actors. So we are supporting customers by addressing their pain points, by bringing in our advanced security solution, both covering the radio access network and the mobile network as a whole. There are over 300 5G networks in the world. And at the time of this recording, 170 of them are delivered by Ericsson. To what extent are they secure today? And is that enough for the threat level of tomorrow? As Hari and I talked before, there are service providers which are more and more being targeted by very sophisticated nation uh, sponsored uh, actors and very well-funded, right? They are very well-funded and very skilled actors. So they need something more advanced that go beyond the security standard and the normal hygiene. So in a future with high-performing programmable networks, what additional security measures are available? Right. So one of the enablers of this high-performing programmable network is called 5G Advanced, right, uh, in RAN which is a set of new software subscriptions. And one of them is called Premium Round Security, where we are bringing in new offerings uh, and also our roadmap to meet the demand of the service providers which are being highly targeted, right? And this is a journey. Uh, the first uh, scope of our, in this journey, is called Integrated Endpoint Detection and Response, Integrated EDR. And by that, uh, we are adding additional capabilities in our radio uh, run baseband. And summarizing then the, the impact of this uh, additional security subscription with 5G Advanced, what risks do we mitigate and what benefits to the service providers do we get uh, with that subscription? So with integrated EDR, uh, operators are better equipped uh, to, to deal with the, with the anomalies. 
And then similarly, other uh, risks uh, related to the air interface to the uh, applications are also mitigated. When you talk about the benefits for the service provider, it's actually being able to identify and stop the attacks in their infancy. So in turn, what they will get is the operational efficiency, you see. Harry, listening to Prajwal, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, aren't there already existing IT cybersecurity tools out there on the market? And why would these not be sufficient? Yeah, well, no. I think it's the, there's two main challenges. First is that these tools are designed for the ID systems. So they're not designed to be installed into these special telecom solutions and nodes, like the basebands. And they could cause disruption, they could cause impact on the availability. So then they're not designed for mobile network solutions. And secondly, they are designed to address the IT threats. So we talked about the uh, advanced persistent threats. So if they target telecom companies, they use special tactics. So they don't address this part either. Compared to the generic IT security tools, Security Manager is purpose-built for mobile network security. So we provide uh, with the Security Manager protection, detection and response capabilities. So we have four different kind of areas which we address, which we call wireless airspace defense. We have extended detection and response. We have the attack surface management, and then we have certificate and trust management. And what are the benefits to service providers? I'll give an example like false base stations. In the air interface, they are a risk to the end user and they're a risk to the network. Then we have a mentioned salt typhoon. So this espionage is a risk to the subscribers and to the service provider and the network itself. But the key thing here is that the Ericsson Security Manager is the tool which reduces the risk to the business. You spoke about the uh, know-how, there, there's a lot of know-how. And this comes back to then the Ericsson culture and Ericsson sort of ways of doing uh, and thinking about security. Pragwal, what's the Ericsson mindset? So actually this is one of the things that make me, makes me very proud of working at Ericsson. We have a very strong security culture and a very top security priority. Yeah. Over decades, we have worked uh, with a very tight collaboration across all domains uh, in uh, Ericsson, covering RAN and other parts of the network. And then this gives us a very uh, important capability to offer end-to-end -end security solution, right? And that is very crucial based on what we just talked before. It's the current demand of the society. Yeah, exactly. So we already today are protecting the network using the base features of RAN with our attack surface management. Now we have the combination of premium RAN security and Ericsson security manager. So we finally get the threat detection and response to the level that it should be. The customers get a network-wide purpose-built mobile network security. And we discussed about the, the advanced persistent threat. So it's crucial to get the kill chain visibility from end to end. Mm -hmm. I only agree with what Hari said. So premium RAN security brings unprecedented defense capability to RAN against sophisticated cyber attacks, right? And with Ericsson Security Manager, this capability is lifted to the whole network level. Exactly. So one plus one is three, you see. If a service provider now would take your two ingredients, combine them into end-to-end -end -to -end solutions, what end user values do they provide to their customers, meaning consumers, enterprises, and society at large? So when I call my wife, I can be sure that the call goes through and the call remains private, yeah. that no one can uh, sniff it over the, over the air. And I could also be confident of making financial transaction while I'm traveling, for example, in a bus. So you see, it's really about getting confidence on the reliability of the network, that I can trust the network and peace of mind of yeah. interacting in the digital yeah. world. Yeah. So for me, cybersecurity is about risk reduction. And that means protecting our digital way of living. That means that the networks are more reliable, we get the calls, our end user privacy is protected, like, like I said, and it means that we can evolve our digital society with 5G networks.